Hi everyone, uh, welcome to today's Light Bites webinar. Today we're going to be looking at facade lighting. I know you've all been excited um, about this one um, and Bex has put together a great presentation for us. Um, we're going to be looking at everything from uh, city properties to remote island villas as well. Um, so you should see a lot of variation in the type of images uh, which we're looking at, which is great because actually, you know, every house is different um, and you do need to consider its um, individuality when you're creating your lighting designs. Uh, and we're going to be able to give you some top tips on that today. Over to you, Bex. Wonderful. Thank you, Luke. Um, so I think the simplest place to start with any facade lighting is the main entrance. And it's always the first impression that you're you're going to be making whenever uh, anybody comes around and it's very very important that you set the tone in the way that you want to to create for the home and it's very very simply done for a lot of projects and i think it's very important that you don't overdo it for the main entrance but also that it, it is a theme that can be continued for the rest of the, the property so here you can see it's a very welcoming entrance with the the low level step lighting and then the up lighting in both the door reveal and in the, in the windows themselves. But it's very subtle, it's very small, it doesn't need to be overpowering. And it certainly just creates this gorgeous soft light that, that really just helps with the whole space because you don't really want to have your guests arriving in total darkness and it needs to be something that is, is also slightly practical. Um, so just layering these up is a very simple first place to start. And, these main entrances vary obviously greatly depending on the style of property. Um, but it's a recurring theme that you want to frame that front entrance in a way that really creates a bit of a wow factor. Uh, but likewise, as I said, it shouldn't overwhelm the space. Um, so one of the very uh, simplistic ways of, of creating that frame effect is by using wall lights. Now, obviously the type of wall light that you use is very, flexible depending on the style of the property. Um, on the left image, you see we've got a very contemporary and a very common use of, of an up and down pillar light. And that, uh, that is used in a very, um, it's, it's used quite a lot actually worldwide. And I think a lot of people sort of know that effect. Um, so it's, it's something that some people might not necessarily like so much. And then on the right hand image, we've got a, a project in Southeast Asia that has these gorgeous uh, wall lights with this hand-blown glass that creates this absolutely spectacular uh, refracted light all over the, the facade itself. So it's something that creates such an intense um, effect because you have to go out and you want to look at it and you want to almost touch the light because it's that beautiful. But then also by framing the architectural details, you again draw uh, your attention to the slightly subtle areas like these archways that may otherwise disappear into the night. And we've also got our lovely little artwork as well that we've, we've uh, highlighted here on the right hand side. Um, Funny you should say that about we... the up down light specs. Um, yeah. Because I remember, <laughs> you know, going back, um, you know, five, six years, maybe a little bit longer. I would probably put the up down lighter multiple times on every single project that I did. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that, I think that was the, first, the trend. Yeah, definitely. And I think even 10 years ago, it's sort of, it's one of those things that people love to, to have. And I think it's also one of those things that people do love to hate now because it's, it's a simple way of doing it um, and it's an effective way. But I think we're trying to sort of bring out the different ideas that you can have because one of the, the imperfections that can happen is when you're using a light against a surface is if it's not perfect, that rendered surface, you will see those imperfections. Um, so you do need to consider also what you are lighting um, as well as what you're framing. So that's, that's certainly something to bear in mind. Um, and if we want to look at more of a classical approach with the framing of a doorway, then considering up lights is obviously, a, it's a bit of a go-to for us in terms of how we might want to light the space. And it obviously creates a very simple but gorgeous effect on the front of the property. Um, but what is also very important is that you don't just have that to frame the columns, you also want to add an additional down light in the center, focusing onto the door itself and creating a pool of light onto the floor in front. And this is a very clever way of creating additional depth to the property because you've got these gorgeous columns and the one thing you don't want to happen is that it appears flat behind it. 
you want to add that depth. So by doing the simple uh, addition of the, of the downlight, you're able to have practical light and also create a little bit more of a focal point onto that front door. And then it also just stands out uh, even more. Um, and then it's not just necessarily the facade or the, the entrance, sorry, I should say, that, uh, that you want to light. Um, here we've got a mixture of uh, wall lights, traditional looking wall lights and up lighting in the space that works beautifully. But what really adds to this mm. whole framing of the front door is the light, firstly behind the landscaping that's, that's positioned either side, but also the light to the, the, the lower part of, of the topiary it's, itself. Now having this silhouette effect just adds again this dimension or this depth that you really want to add into the space um, because obviously facades are essentially you know a flat face and it needs to be something that still is interesting like any other ceiling or surface that you would consider inside the home. So by having the light both behind and in front you're suddenly able to create a little bit more interest. And what you'll notice in this image with this facade is that most of the lighting itself actually originates from the landscaping, which is something that is a bit of a recurring theme when we look at facades, is that it's not just the facade itself, you need to see what is around it. If you have a lot amount or a high amount of landscaping, it certainly needs to be lit in a way that's not going to detract from the whole space. Yeah. You've got the opposite um, issue here, Bex. Yeah, the opposite <laughs> here, we have absolutely nothing to hide with the lighting. So we have to integrate it in a way that is um, obviously within the, the, the details themselves. But what I love about this image is the fact that it's very, very simple and it is a very good case of how much light from the inside comes out of the property. Um, you don't need to light a facade in a way that overlights it, floods it with light, because naturally when you are home and, and your lights are on, the light will obviously extend outward. And just by framing this front door and creating this entranceway, you're able to give that welcoming effect and light the area that is needed, but not necessarily overwhelm the rest of the property with the lighting. So it's, it's incredibly important to consider the surroundings that your, your project is in before considering the lighting. And in a space like this that has a lot of light pollution, um, you might be tempted to add a lot more light, but you don't necessarily need it. Um, mm. I don't think we want to be contributing to the light pollution issues that we have worldwide. And it's certainly something that as lighting designers, we should be aware of when we are applying lights to our projects. And so just by focusing on this entrance, you can see how, how drastic the difference is with, with mm. just a small amount of lighting. With a um, property but, like that, Bex, I always think it's a good idea to <clears throat> look and see what the neighbours have got as well. Because exactly, yeah. You don't want to you, you you don't want to stand out like a sore thumb on the street and no. Even we if want, you keep I mean, it you, discreet, it can look a bit too much sometimes. Yeah, you want to, you want to really make sure it is going to. I mean, you want it to stand apart because it's your home, so you want it to be that. But as you said, you don't want it to be sort of the odd one out and, and it can be the odd one out in a good way, but also an odd one out in a bad way. Um, and I think also, I mean, it's, it's definitely worth noting that the, uh, the low wattage is what has made it so successful, but potentially also dimming as well so that you're able to create a little bit of, uh, of a softer environment, which we can move on to later. But one thing I wanted to just point out with this image is the fact that there are actually surface mounted fixtures used on the front door here. Um, so for those of you who have a front entrance and you want to retrofit the lighting or you want to add lighting in a place that isn't currently there, surface mount options are actually quite an effective way of adding this, the light to the space. And it works incredibly subtly if it's, if it's a beautifully small fixture. Uh, so using something that, that disappears, as you can see on this left hand image is actually quite small, uh, yet very, very effective in the space. So then if we revert back to our landscaping that we were able to, to work with, you're able to see that, again, it's a very subtle entranceway, but a lot of the lighting onto the main facade 
is taken from the landscaping just around. And this is where spike lights become our best friend. And often there is a fear to use them in these landscaping because they might be moved or as things grow, um, you might need to move the spike lights, but it's much easier to adapt with landscaping with the spike lights than if you were to have a recessed up light or linear light. Because obviously, as we know, shrubbery grows very, very fast. And unless it's maintained daily at the exact same um, sort of rate of growth, then it's, it's always going to be, um, it's always going to overhang the, the lighting very, very quickly. 